Hi, uh, my name is James Kahn. Uh, people call me Hank, and I am from running for United States Senate in the state of California. I am running as a Green Party candidate. When you think about people like Kamala Harris, and you think of people like Elizabeth Warren or Joseph Biden, and you think about the campaign promises that they made and aren't true now, such as Medicare for All, abolishing student debt, the children that sit at the borders, and these horrible things, and you think to yourself, it's been 11 months, and you know these are promises that are not kept. I am a Green Party candidate, and people will always ask me about my opposition, I say, well, in a world where the only other candidates are green, and the only other politicians are green, what would I provide to you? What would any green provide to you? They would build a world away from oil. They would have, and I have, a platform that is about saving and establishing the environment for future, future generations, the environment above all else. Behind me, I am in the redwood forest in Northern California. These trees were once a thousand years old and two thousand years old. We only see trees now that are maybe fifty to maybe two hundred years old. But think of all these great giants that they came up on and just chopped down and they said, okay, we stopped. But it's going to take a thousand years for them to reestablish. Everything we destroy now does not reestablish. So we must act today. Please vote green. And I am a Green Party of candidate. My name is Hank Kahn, and I am running for U.S. Senate in 2022. Hey, and welcome to Monday's edition of uh, Just Calvin. Uh, if you're new here, first of all, welcome. Uh, secondly, uh, this show basically is a highlight green party or economic uh, activity. And uh, let's see, pretty much anything uh, climate related uh, or there, be, there would be some COVID related stuff here. From Columbus, Ohio, uh, you are listening to of, uh, another episode of news. Just Calvin. Many of Greens representative demands action on oil, water, adversaries, advisories, excuse me, and houses of com- uh, House of Commons. Speaking in the House of Commons on December 16th of 2021, Green Party Parliament member for Kitchen, uh, Kitchener Center, Mike Morris, um, spoke out and demanded action on oil, water advisories and Canadian First Nations communities. In 2015, Justin Trudeau and his Liberal government vowed to end all oil, water advisories in the uh, in the country within five years. At the time, 162 such advisories were in place. Today, over five years later, 119 long-term oil advisories have been put to an end. However, 43 remain in place in the country affected 31 different First Nations communities. Uh, according to the Minister of Indigenous Services, Patty uh, uh, Hsu, uh, the the government continues to develop uh, strategies to work with indigenous communities to provide them with clean drinking water in a way that is respectful of some of the limitations and priorities that they have. Furthermore, she states that having an artificial deadline for ending the advisors wouldn't actually accelerate the work in any way. While uh, has it you uh, claims that she will do anything to solve the water uh, problem in First Nation communities, according to Mike Morris, the actions of the federal government not did not did not show that this is true or to be true. Reverently uh, calling out the liberals on the House floor, Maurice pointed out that a recent parliamentary budget office. Officers, excuse me, report, uh, report uh, calls out a significant gap, 
more is continued, uh, continued stating that 138 million more is needed in annual upgrading spending in order to uh, truly accomplish the goal of bringing clean drinking water to all of the country's First Nations communities. The uh, Green Party representatives concluded this remarks, uh, his remarks by calling on the federal government to allocate the resources necessary to fulfill his 2015 promise and ensure that every First Nation community has what every person in Canada deserves, access to clean water and drinking water. According to Native News Online, reports show reality of homicides in Indian country. On November 19th, 2021, the Centers for Disease Control released a report on homicides of American Indians or Alaska Natives from 2003 to 2018. As part of the National Violent Death Reporting System, or NBDRS, According to the report, homicides is a leading cause of death for American Indians uh, or Alaska Natives for homicides related to intimate partners viola uh, violence, IP IPV, nearly 90% of American Indian uh, Alaska Native female victims were killed by a current or former intimate partner. Uh, the report covers data on 2,226 American Indian Alaska Native Homicides collected from 34 states, which includes uh, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, California, uh, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, uh, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, uh, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Utah, Virginia, Washington, and Wisconsin, and the District of Columbia. The homicide rate was 8 per 100,000 uh, of the AI or AN population, and the rate was three times higher in men than women. The median age of victims was 32 years old, and the average age range was 23 to 44 years old. About half the homicide uh, victims lived in or were killed in metropolitan areas of firearms, or sorry, a firearm was used almost half the, hom half the homicides. Firearms were only used to kill more than, were also used, excuse me, also used to kill more than, more men uh, more often than women. Over 80% of the suspects, the suspects were men. Uh, but less than a third of suspects were AL or AMs. I think it's um, American Indian and Alaska Natives. Uh, over 50% were suspects were white, non-Hispanic. Women were more likely to be killed in their own home. Women were more likely to be killed by a current or former intimate partner, while men were more likely to be killed by a friend or relative. The report shows interpersonal conflict was a predominant in circumstances leading to the homicide with nearly half of the homicides preceded by an argument. Data from the report includes victim and suspect sex, age, group, and race, ethnicity, method of injury, type of location where the homicide occurred, events that contributed to the homicide, and other uh, select uh, characteristics. Hi, uh, my name is James Kahn, uh, people call me Hank, and I am from running for United States Senate in the state of California. I am running as a Green Party candidate. When you think about people like Kamala Harris, and you think of people like Elizabeth Warren or Joseph Biden, and you think about the campaign promises that they made and aren't true now, such as Medicare for All, abolishing student debt, the children that sit at the borders and these horrible things and you think to yourself it's been 11 months and you know these are promises that are not kept. I am a Green Party candidate and people always ask me about my opposition I say well in a world where the only other candidates are green and the only other politicians are green what would I provide to you? 
What would any green provide to you? They would build a world away from oil. They would have, and I have, a platform that is about saving and establishing the environment for future, future generations, the environment above all else. Behind me, I am in the redwood forest in Northern California. These trees were once a thousand years old and two thousand years old. We only see trees now that are maybe fifty to maybe two hundred years old. But think of all these great giants that they came up on and just chopped down and they said, okay, we stopped. But it's going to take a thousand years for them to reestablish. Everything we destroy now does not reestablish. So we must act today. Please vote green. And I am a Green Party of candidate. My name is Hank Kahn, and I am running for U.S. Senate in 2022. Uh, speaking, uh, no, I was, as you can see on the screen, it is uh, Warren Bosler. Who is the uh, the founder of money monetary theory? Even though it says money money theory, um, this the the next uh, article I'm going to read is that was actually published by him. Uh, if you like uh, to learn more about money monetary theory, you can go on to the website you see before you, realprogressives.org, and then look up uh, events and afternoon with Warren Mosler. Um, this is for Green Party members or also Green Party, but if you want to uh, attend the register, as you can see up below, uh, where it says register here to attend, uh, that is on January 5th, between 3 and 5. Anyway, uh, see, speaking of which, uh, I guess uh, France, uh, I don't know, no one knows. I guess it was, it was uh, yeah, uh, the publication does not, doesn't actually show a date, I don't think, but anyway, let's see, uh, working paper series number 833, the meaning of MMT, I guess it's a uh, French publication, uh, in the last few years, and I don't read French, this is English, I did. And uh, in the last few years in the U.S., and especially since the publication of Stephanie Tilton's book, Depths of Myth, Depths of Myth, sorry, Depths of Myth, held in 2020, in Europe, the so-called modern monetary theory has been gaining prominence in the media and the public. This paper exposes the main proposals of MMT in the light of their doctrine and sources, also comparing them with economic uh, facts and with other currents. Uh, currents of economic thought. The first part deals with the approach to money and monetary policy developed by MMT. The second part with its recommendation regarding fiscal policy and aggregate demand fund management. The third part with the structure structural policy and advocate, uh, advocates. The, fir the fourth part with the international aspect of MMT. The fifth part concludes overall its uh, it's, it's, this paper exposes the main purpose of the so-called modern monetary theory in the light of their doctrine. Sources also confronted them with economic facts and with other currents of uh, economic thought. Uh, so far, I find this interesting that, that you would uh, actually share this. But anyway, George uh, Frederick uh, Knapp's State of Theory of uh, Money. Uh, there, thereafter, uh, STM provides the main theoretical underpinning of MMT's approach to money. Money is a creation of the law. It is a, men it is a means of payment. It is a token. It is a representative representation. The, uh, the STM was received very mildly. Reviews note that the STM says nothing but the value of money and lacks correspondence with historical facts, although. This is not explicitly stated by MMG economists. They consider money as a pure asset that the state can create at will, whereas it both as a, an asset, asset to be a liability in the STM. In that regard, MMT represents a rigorous vis-a-vis uh, -vis the STM. Regarding money, MMT makes a confusion, confusion between legal or fiat currency and the euro or the, or the dollar. 
cash and does not signal the recent modern liter literature on money puts forward, but makes legal currency acceptable by the policy, i.e. monetary policy, credibility, moreover. MT does not provide uh, an explanation of mo monetary policy strategy or a description of the, mo uh, the monetary transmission mechanism from monetary policy decisions to the broader e economy. Instead, it considers that law should set the objectives of monetary policy and focuses on one specific as uh, aspect of mo uh, monetary policy implementation, liquidity management by the central bank conveying the false measure that it is conducted under the uh, instructions of the treasury. Hence, MMT views the central bank as the government's fiscal agent and central bank independent as a myth. We highlighted that both historically, historical precedent and attempt to measure the impact of the MMT program in the U.S. through a public debt monetization provide strong uh, cautionary tales against such an approach. Learner's functional finance theory of 1943, uh, hereafter FFT, uh, provides the fundamental build, uh, building blocks for MMT's fiscal doctrine. FFT is referred to as functional because it's focused in, uh, focuses on the macroeconomic outcome of fiscal policy rather than its budgetary impact. Uh, Stigler's comment according to which FFT has an attractive simplicity that is purchased at the high, pro, pro, uh, high pro price of avoiding real problems and nicely sums up reactions to FFT MMT's fiscal policy doctrine builds on FFT's dismal of debt con uh, constraints on government borrowing, according that, uh, arguing that a sovereign currency issuer is financially unconstrained. However, MMT's pro uh, believe that fiscal policy is much more effective than monetary policy at managing aggregate demand. A major criticism is that MMT is unable to pr prove its uh, claims given the lack of formal modeling. MMT also argues that there is no relation between fiscal deficit and interest rates, or between fiscal deficits and inflation. In fact, the shift to the to MMT fiscal policy regime would obviously generate these relationships via the impact of change in expectations on financial markets. MFT proposes to uh, complement fine-tuning fiscal policy with structural programs aiming at a direct, uh, directly controlling the allocation of, of resources. Full employment would be achieved through a public service employment program which would act as a automatic stabilizer and by, by large-scale spending on infrastructure, clean, uh, climate change, and the environment dubbed the Green New Deal. We show that these purposes reflect MMT's view that would provide a uh, private uh, indebtedness is supposed to be conducive to financial fragility, while a government-led expansion would enhance financial stability by providing self-assets and income to the private sector. Finally, uh, external policies are MMT's benign neglect. The table above, oh, sorry, there's a table that's above in this, um, in this whole thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to wait to, uh, to see my, my, uh, my thoughts on this after I uh, get done with the rest of this. Uh, next one. Uh, this next piece of news is uh, versus any progress. Savannah economy warring to pre pandemic levels, but wages still lag. This is today, so the story is part, uh, is part of the First City Progress and Weekly Series, looking at trends and development in Savannah and the coastal empire. If there are projects you're curious about or uh, we've left out, we 
emails are we at z nicholson at gannett g a w n e t t dot com. Well, Savannah's economy has more than recovered, surpassing pre-pandemic levels of output and revenue of wages for workers remain stagnant according to the Economic Monitor. A quarterly report from Georgia, as uh, uh, Georgia Southern Economic Professor Michael Tama, it is a bit of, of a conundrum because state and national wage rates are more on space with inflation but that's not the case in Savannah right now. At least over the last 18 months or so, wages have drifted sideways at best, the Tomas said. Once you adjust for inflation, the numbers are actually down. Wages in Savannah area are 5% lower than they were uh, what they were at this time last year, according to the report. The average house wage for the third quarter of 2021 which is July through, through September was $21.61 or 62 cents, which is equivalent to 44970 a year. Inflation has outpaced wages, meaning workers have had to stretch their pennies during the latter half of the pandemic, but there's some encouraging signs that, that the numbers uh, will start to pick up, Tama uh, predicted, while wages are lagging behind economic growth, the Savannah region added 4,300 jobs in the last uh, in the area's three-county region. Thomas said the growth of jobs in the uh, logistics and business services sectors indicate a shift of workers from retail and hosp uh, hospitality into these sectors. Thomas Thomas calls it a restructuring of the economy. Fundamentally, the economy is just worrying along, he said, with respect to job growth and creation. The biggest story, the big story is simply that we have not exceeded the level of employment that was experienced in the quarter just before the pandemic yet. Since employment dipped in the early months of the pandemic, the Savannah area has added more than 30,000 jobs back to the workforce. Tourism, ports, and the triple sales mostly contribute to the growing economy with retail sales easing from the second quarter. Hotel room sales were up 24% and airplane boarding increased 14% indicating the return of tourism and tourists to the hostess city. Tourism, employment, and revenue has yet to fully recover to pre-pandemic levels that the report uh, uh, found while the economy is mostly recovering from pandemic-related impacts. Inflation rates have yet to cool. For producers, costs have inflation at nearly 10%, while consumers have seen a 6.8% inflation rate. Both gouges of inflation are expected to remain uh, elevated uh, until easing con uh, concurrently with supply chain, bottlenecks, and labor market. Uh, shortages towards the second half of 2022, the port states. The Georgia Ports Authority have uh, has eased much of its congestion. The light in the line of ships waiting to dock decreased from about 30 to 6 over the fall, but future expansion will help to ease the de uh, delays as they open in the coming months and years. Okay, there goes that one. If you guys like what you hear, like what you see, um, register here to or register at the website you see. Um, and I guess I'll see you as regards to that on uh, July 5th. As you can see, I'm an organizer of the whole thing. Anyway, so let's see. This is a little bit of a. Um, actually, you know what? I'll save uh, some of the stuff about uh, the COVID uh, or after all this. It would, let's see. Uh, from earthrights.org. Uh, this is uh, dated December 22nd, so just a couple days ago. 
In 2021, the climate crisis reached a tipping point. The worlds of scientists called for a major action to avoid the worst consequences of climate changes or change. Despite these warnings, the people and communities were protect, uh, who protect the environment continue to face violent repression from their work. Uh, many forms of violence were uh, perpetrated against them, often by the state and attractive, uh, extractive uh, industries. While violence is often described as some form of property damage or physical injury, the actions of states and companies against environmental defenders suggest that Silence, uh, sorry, violence, uh, silence with violence uh, can extend far beyond this traditional definition. Governments acting on behalf of industries often impose violence on frontline communities that resist extraction, uh, extractive development. This violence comes in all forms, hyper surveillance, detention, intimidation, uh, pain, uh, pain compliance or torture physical harm, pollution, coordination uh, between private industry and the state, and inact inaction on the climate crisis. When activists rise up, their civil disobedience is often framed as criminal activity. Defining violence in such narrow terms and overlooking the actions of state and corporate players means that violence against frontline community communities, rather, is often accepted and, uh, and allowed to continue. Every year the climate crisis gets worse. The longer it takes for governments to act, the more dangerous those on the front lines of the crisis face. In 2021, we've seen many instances of uh, violence against uh, land defenders and water protectors and climate activists worldwide. There's a, there's a few. Uh, wet Suet and Land Defenders. In Canada, the Wet Suet uh, and public uh, people and allies are fighting to stop the coastal gas link pipeline, which, if completed, will be the largest fracking project in Canadian history. The pipeline would cut through wet suet and territories and create an energy corridor, incentivizing other gas companies to tap into shell, uh, shell deposits along the route. If completed, the project has the potential to uh, irreversibly damage the environment in that area. To stop the project, indigenous water protectors set up resistant, uh, res resistance camps along the proposed route. The state responded by es escalating its attacks against the land defenders in November. Police showed up in wet suet and territory with assault rifles, helicopters, canine units, and even tanks to try to end the 50-day indigenous land blockade. In the midst of a, of a police raid on November 19th, indigenous land defender Molly Wickham shared that has, uh, there had been approximately 15 arrests that had happened already at the Giddington uh, checkpoint. The, uh, legal advisor or observers, excuse me, media uh, have been arrested. Two of our wet Suetan elders have been arrested and removed from the territory. The violence against indigenous people defending their land compounds project is being forced upon those are these communities and the police sort of responding to their resistance is violent. Today, eight people sit in jail in Honduras for defending their community's access to fresh water. In 2018, the uh, Wupinal Water Defenders set up an 88-day encampment to protect fresh water in the Carlos Escaleras National Park which provides clean water for thousands of people. They, do, they did so to protect the water from the mining project by uh, inversions Las Pineros, a private extractive, uh, extractive company. The police uh, working with the company charged the Guapino, uh, Guapino water defenders with arson and unlawful privation. Uh, uh, and our deprivation of liberty. 
these brave community leaders have been sitting in a pre-trial detention center since September of 2019. This continued detention amounts to violence where uh, our where our could argue where one could argue excuse me that the company has turned the courts into a weapon to wield against their critics. Finding three water protectors. <clears throat> the movement to stop the Lion 3 pipeline reached its peak in, in some summer. As the pipeline pr project grew near to completion, so did the effort to stop the project. In some cases, indigenous water protectors put their own bodies in the way of construction. A pipeline in itself is violent in that it subjects the communities to increase air and water pollution. Hand camps are a place where temporary workers live during pipeline construction are connected to increased sexual violence in the community near the pipeline. Yet those uh, yet those charged with crimes related to the pipeline, including gross misdemeanors and felonies, were not the financial and industrial backers of the project. Indigenous water protectors and their allies engaged in civil disobedience to delay the completion of the line, which is likely to lead to the greenhouse gas emissions comparable to building 50 new coal power plants, forced, oh, sorry, faced police uh, violence and their resistance. Police violence include uh, shooting uh, rubber bullets, using paint compliance, and protecting for torture. Um, of uh, pain, I'm sorry, not pain, but pain, kind of compliance of uh, techniques, again, or torture, uh, dusting, uh, dusting water protectors with helicopters and surveillance, the camps, and more. When arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience, several reports from water protectors and allies in jail alleged that the state refused to uh, give them their Medications, a form of medical violence, the Minnesota police have been paid over $3 million by uh, Enbridge through a public escrow account for uh, policing pipeline uh, resistance in uh, Amkoi region of Thailand. And Karen community continues to fight for its rights to clean water and air uh, against a proposed coal mine near their home by, co by a company called 99 uh, Co Ltd. The company has deployed a range of tactics to repress community resistance to the project. The Karen people are the biggest ethnic minority group in Thailand. Yet the Thai state has never recognized their rights to their uh, ancestral land or their status as indigenous group because the people have no formal recognition of the rights to their uh, ancestral land. The coal company was able to use this as leverage to acquire land. The community is completely self-sustained and its livelihood depends on the health of its surroundings and the surrounding environment. The looming threat of this project has intensified this year as more young leaders have been criminalized with the company accusing several protesters with criminal de defamation, including two human rights defenders for gathering and dec decimating anti-coal mine information. Or dis disseminating, excuse me. Uh, this, criminal, this criminalization, intimidation, and refusal to uh, recognize the ancestral right to their land is violence. The community remains in limbo uh, whether or not they will lose their home and livelihoods to the coal mine. Now you can get the rest of this on earthrights.org slash blog slash five something. Um, I guess A little bit on the um, on the uh, on the Amazon uh, side of things.
This is from Hawaiian Public Radio dot uh, org. This was just a couple days ago. It states that Omicron will cause more infections, but lower hospital rates. Analysts show a new anal- uh, analysis by the University of Washington shows an Omicron surge will peak in a massive wave of infection by the end of January, but is likely to produce far fewer severe illnesses for most people. The analyst projects the Omicron wave will infect more than 400,000 people a day in the U.S. when it crests in about six weeks. That's far more than 250,000 people who caught the virus every day at the peak of last winter's surge. But the researchers estimate that most of those who catch uh, Omicron won't get sick or will only get mildly sick. As a result, the rate of people getting hospitalized and dying from Omicron uh, will be much lower, the analyst concludes. Uh, the researchers question whether there's enough evidence to reliably estimate by how sick Omicron uh, makes people. But, but they agree that the sheer number of people catching the virus could still overwhelm hospitals. But could uh, that uh, even be based on? Wrote Natalie D, uh, biostatistician and uh, epidemiologist at uh, Emory University, uh, in an email to NPR. Evidence to over on reduced severity is suggestive, but still very premature. Justin Lesler, an epidemiologist at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, uh, said that uh, with so much uh, unknown uh, known about Omicron, he would take uh, any projection with a grain of salt. Some of the quantitative things they are saying about somewhat uh, are saying uh, seem somewhat reasonable, but it is hard to say for sure. At this point, Lester said in an email to NPR, I, uh, I certainly would say far too much uh, to unknown about Omicron right now. To make, to make what I would consider a formal forecast or single projection. I think there is some chance there are right, they are right, but I think there, I can't think of what the data, those, de- uh, those, those death numbers could possibly be based on at this point, Lester wrote. Globally, the, an, uh, the analysts projected that the world will see 3 billion or more infectious over the next three months, which is as many as the entire two years of the pandemic, said uh, Dr. Chris Murray, director of the University Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Researchers project, project that there could be 35 million new cases a day around around the world by mid-January or triple the previous uh, highest rate of infection. President Biden on Tuesday announced his plan to combat the surge in the U.S., sending out half a billion at-home test kits and support teams to uh, hospitals that could be overwhelmed by new cases. Let's see that part, I suppose. Uh, I try to uh, uh, edit my little list of news every time I do one of these. So, let's see. This is from the BBC. Climate change. Choose told of extreme weather disasters in 2021. Well, we're almost done with 2021, so there you go. Um, a study from the charity Christian Aid identified 10 extreme events that, that each caused more than 1.5 billion of damage. The biggest financial impact was from Hurricane Ida, which hit the U.S. In August, and flooding in Europe and Europe in July. In many poor regions, floods and storms caused mass displacements of uh, displacements of people and uh, severe suffering. Not every extreme weather event is caused by or linked to a climate change. Although uh, scientists have become older in exploring the connection, one leading researcher, Dr. Frederick Otto tweeted earlier this year that every uh, that every heat wave happening in the world right now, the world now is 
made more likely and more intense by humans induced uh, human induced climate change. In relation to uh, uh, storms and hurricanes, there is growing evidence that climate change is also affecting these events. In August, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, published the first, uh, first per, uh, part of its sixth assessment report. In relation to hurricanes and tropical cyclones, the authors said they have high confidence that the evidence of human influence has strengthened. The proportion of intense tropical cyclones average uh, peak tropical cyclone wind speeds and peak um, peak wind uh, speeds at the most intense tropical cyclones will increase on the global scale with increasing global warming the study says it's just a few weeks after the report came out hurricane hit Ida hit the u.s according to a christian aid it was the most financially destructive weather event of the year the slow-moving hurricane saw thousands of residents in Louisiana evacuated out of its path. That storm brought massive rainfall across a number of states and cities, with New York, uh, New York issuing a flash flood emergency alert for the first time. Around 95 people died, with the economic losses estimated at 65 billion. The second most financial costly event was the widespread flooding across Germany, France, and other European countries in July. The speed and intensity of the water overwhelmed defenses, and 240 people lost their lives, reported damages of around 43 billion. In the study, the major majority of the weather events in the list occurred in developed countries. Uh, see, that's because it is more feasible to estimate financially financial losses from insurance claims, and these are usually uh, available in richer countries where uh, people can afford to insure their homes and businesses. According to an insurance company, uh, Aon, 2021 is likely to be the fourth uh, fourth time in five years that global natural catastrophes have cost more than $100 billion. The report also documents many other events where the financial impact is harder to ascertain, but where the impact on people is significant. Flooding in the South Sudan displaced over 800,000 people, while 200,000 had to move to escape Cyclone Tayapti, uh, which hit India, uh, Sri Lanka, and the uh, Melde. Maldives in May. That's a huge human impact, said, uh, said report the author Dr. Kat Kramer from Christian Aid. Obviously, losing your home, your livelihoods, and everything are not having the resources to rebuild, that is incredibly tough. Whereas, at least if you have insurance, you have some mechanism for uh, building that back. The report highlights the need for increased efforts or uh, curbing emissions of carbon dioxide to reduce uh, future weather related impacts. It is also calling on global climate diplomats to put their money where the mouth is and help poorer countries that suffer huge economic losses. In 20, in, uh, sorry, in uh, the COP26 Global Climate Talks in Glasgow, this issue of finance for loss of damage caused by climate-related uh, events saw major disagreement between countries. Developing nations wanted to cash the richer ones that said that we want more talks on the question. Although it was good to see the issue of loss and damage become a major issue at COP26, it was bitterly disappointing to leave without a fund set up to actually help people who are suffering permanent losses from uh, climate change and Nish was it? Nishrat uh, Chow Chowdhury, uh, uh, the whole other word that name, but uh, I'm writing it. Christian is climate justice advisor in Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, bringing that fund to life needs to 
be a global priority in 2022. Uh, true. Now, kind of going back to the uh, French publication, one thing I found interesting was they did not, uh, they did not uh, uh, talk about corporates and debts. They didn't talk about military spending, all those things that are the hallmark of spending bills in the United States anyway. Um, now, monetary theory, from which I keep learning and I keep seeing, is based on everybody likes to talk about the national debt. National debt is as I as I've seen every single time they they pass uh, some sort of tax rebate tax uh, write off for the for literally the, the bigger corporations that don't actually need uh, that money. Um, they that money uh, should have been should have been spent into the economy for public services that would actually go for people who will be spending it allowing demand uh, to be within the economy, allowing jobs to be uh, uh, either created or jobs kept, especially during uh, the pandemic uh, or pandemic, however you want to look at it. Um, I noticed that critics, critics of MMT always go to that part, always want to uh, mention things like printing money. Well, printing money is how you effectively um, introduce more cash flow into the economy in order to be able to spend it through bills, through um, through tax expenditures. But that's what tax write-offs are. In regards to uh, in regards to the books on the IRS, the IRS looks at that as a tax expenditure because it's not money that's coming into a government cost. Um, in regards to uh, maybe in France it's not like this, but here in the United States, probably know about uh, the cent uh, the central bank or the Fed and the Treasury Department are one. They they, they are government um, uh, agencies. Uh, they take their cue from Congress, from the Senate. The Senate, Congress, uh, puts together bills. They especially spending bills. Uh, they negotiate what money uh, they want to allocate for whatever programs or, you know, uh, or uh, military spending, stuff like that. And what they do is they then, uh, add, uh, they then uh, send uh, the, I, I, this part I'm still kind of fuzzy on, but they send the, uh, the thing to the treasury and the treasury, now uh, cashes out enough treasuries to get the money from I, uh, you know, that that part. I'm still I'm still buzzing on. Overall, what I do know is, if a country is a sovereign currency fiat, whatever have you, if they if they don't borrow money outside of their own currency, uh, and they have control over the interest rates, which actually control the the uh, price, uh, the the uh, price stability within the economy of that country, um, through loans and such, um, and yeah. Anyway, uh, and if they now the central bank, now I, I had it on my my Twitter um, bio for a while that it's not a private bank. It literally is there to help other banks and other and other governments as well as our own government, which means that whatever money is allocated, they loan possibly to other countries that uh, uh, have their currency paid to ours, in regards to our currency. So now I understand the fact that French, what's part I know about their I may be wrong about this, but I don't know much about their currency and their and their government and their fiscal policies. But as far as I know about, they're a part of the EU. 
I don't, I'm going to look that up here pretty soon. Uh, but anyway, um, my point being is, if 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 you are going to criticize um, a fiat currency that is that that is used by a, a country that can that has its own central bank and can actually uh, literally pay its own bills and its own currency and also pay other countries to that currency, um, you don't really have much to say as far as that work goes because if you are if you are indeed a part of another, of another country's currency, you don't have that kind of power. So as far as I'm concerned, you don't have much to say in regards to that. You are obviously entitled to your opinion. It doesn't mean your opinion is right. Um, again, I don't know. Let me kind of that up actually as I'm sitting here. Uh, if, you, uh, if you enjoy the news that I reported, please uh, subscribe. To, to whatever platform you hear or see this on. And I'm going to be right back. Yeah, according to the exchange, uh, the French franc was the currency of France from 1795 until 2002 when it was replaced by the euro. So yeah, they are part of the euro as far as the part goes. Um, my point being yes, MMT has literally showed me um, what the uh, what what the consequences of the Senate and the Treasury and the Fed and what the interest rate is and what the interest rate does within the economy. Uh, basically, it. Yeah, it's like what the Turkish lira is right is doing right now. They are, uh, they are, as far as I know about, they are right now currently linked to the U.S. dollar. So they're trying to actually. It sounds like they're trying to get themselves away from the U.S. dollar to a certain degree. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but that's my that's my thought anyway. Uh, which could be smart because that way they are not. Uh, they're, they're, they don't. They, they don't have to go by what the U.S. dollar is going on the on the money market. Um, anyway, in that part, I may be totally wrong. We're still, even though I've been uh, spouting at the mouth about NFT and all that stuff, I'm still learning. Uh, I will always be learning as far as the part goes. But there are certain parts of it that I have I have not uh, I have not obtained as far as like actual working knowledge. But what I do know is the basics, as far as that part goes, is basically if you if you have your own sovereign currency and you and whatever borrowing you do is within is within your own banking system, within your own financial system through central banking and whatnot, um, you can literally yes, you, you the only spending limit there is is what what, what the Congress does and what they vote for. As far as that part goes, so and unfortunately, right now we have someone like a Joe Manchin who is on I, uh, the gas, oil, and resources uh, committee, the chairman of there. And on a private note, he's very heavily involved in the coal industry in West Virginia. Um, he has investments in gas and oil, unless I checked, anyways. So, Quite a, and actually, quite a few Democrats and Republicans both do on that. So to get the Green New Deal or anything like that, in order to, to if you are wanting change in the climate sense, then we got to get open primaries in every state. We have to get uh, ranked choice voting in every state. We have to allow for third parties that have uh, policies pertaining to climate change. Uh, to be in there and actually have a better chance of winning. So that that's up to you guys in regards to uh, getting uh, open primaries as a uh, ballot initiative in your state because it's not going to be it's not going to be happening at a federal uh, a uh, at the federal level. Federal level, the the U.S. government does not want more than two uh, more than a two party system. They want to have to serve up with Democrats. And sucking in, you know, the social alternative at DSA. Um, same thing with the with the, the Tea Party uh, in regards to uh, the Republicans. Um, 
they all have their little branches, whether it be more extremism on either side as far as the part goes. Anyway, my point being is, if you actually literally want to change, you find that party that want, that wants the same changes you want, uh, and if they're not, if they don't have ballot access or universal ballot access, meaning that no matter what, they have access in every ballot line in the country, and you got to make sure that they do. You have to make sure that uh, that they get on the ballot in every state that that, that is uh, safety uh, that you want your third party to be on, and also uh, ranked choice voting, which is a diff- which is another way. I mean, that part I can see being uh, negotiable as far as the part goes, but open primaries that opens it up for other parties to be able to get into it. So keep that in mind. And while you're at it, if you do want, if you do want to learn about modern monetary theory, then what you could do, as you can see here, hopefully, and if you can hear me, hopefully, I do have a problem with this with this computer sometimes. Uh, you go to up here, put this in the address, and then uh, what you want to do is go down here, go to register. And register. It is on January 5th. It's between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. You can ask questions. You can do which one as far as that part goes. Um, and I guarantee you it's going to be a learning experience. I guarantee you it's going to be a fun experience, and I am looking forward to it. Anyway, uh, that was that's pretty much all the news I have for today. Uh, this will be. This will be on my YouTube. Uh, this will also be on my uh, Rumble. Uh, I believe it's one more opinion on uh, Rumble. Um, and International Green Party and Socialist News on YouTube. Or you can also look up the keywords Just Calvin. Uh, also, this can be, you know, this will be on my anchor. And this might possibly be on WGRN, depending on, uh, on them. But anyways, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Whatever you did as far as that part goes. Um, subscribe to this channel. Uh, support me at paypal.me slash uh, leftist capital GAP network. Um, or you can uh, support me by going to wgrn.org slash journal. This will also be on there as well. So thanks for watching, listening. Uh, follow me on at Real, Real Sogon on uh, Twitter. I'm on Facebook too, Jakarta Pagata, uh, or Calvin Taylor. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, uh, if you are a, uh, if you are a candidate that's that's currently running, uh, let me know. And I have no problem with advertising your candidacy, Green Party. Uh, Real Socialist Party, um, not dead. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's a different thing. Anyways, peace out for now. I'll talk to you guys later on. Uh, register today. Go to uh, realprogressive.org uh, uh, and look up uh, January 5th in the events calendar. Uh, however, uh, just so you guys would know, also know it is on January 6th. I will be at the State House here in Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, that is, uh, our revolution will be doing a uh, vigil, and, uh, I think a vigil for democracy, uh, that starts at 6.30, I will be live streaming you uh, on YouTube, so check that out when it comes up, peace out for now.